have to continue doing what I, I have to do until you know, one day I might be able to get somebody to help me do it again. I will by the grace of God. Uh, if not in the kingdom of God, what do I tell you in eternity? We are living in some serious times. I'm gonna, as I said, I'm gonna sing the title track from this this album. I can feel the anointing. You can Google it. You know, it's I can feel the anointing album. A USB cup. You can play it if you want. Uh, download it. Um, whatever form you wanna use, the MSN, whatever you wanna use. Um, uh, let me get the track going and. David, you know my name. Those of you who are joining from, um, let me see what we get this down here. Yeah.
track on the album. All I wish to say is from Jesus. But you can get it online. Um, you can send to me if you want a CD. Uh, if you want a CD, you can send to me. Um, some more try to finish it off on the right note. Oh my god. You are Lord. You are Lord. You are Lord. You are Lord. When I first wrote that song um, it didn't have that part on it and it was just called moving up. <laughs> That's what it was called. This I can feel the anointing and the victory his grace inside and Jesus your Lord. That was just the first part. And I wrote that part in Jamaica. And um, I never, I don't know if Brother Newton remember it because he told me he liked the song. But I had it sitting down there for years and years and years. That I would revisit it when I was doing um, this album or before I did it. I said before I did it. And um, made it into something. And for the first time you hear it, I hope it be a Bible. Um, you heard the actual track, you heard my little um, ad lib part on it. And um, add it to your collection of worship hymns. I can feel the anointing. And I pray by the grace of God that as you sing, you actually will feel the anointing upon you today. We want to talk about what time it is, okay? Um, I don't know what might be going to your mind when you saw the post last night or this morning when you woke up. Or I don't know how long ago you might have seen it, but it said, what time is it? Um, this morning I'm thinking about it, I'm praying, and I'm saying, Lord, but I, see, I don't even know what to say. There's so much things going on in my mind, in my spirit, where the subject is concerned that I said I don't even know what to say, where to start, where to, where to go with it. But I know the Holy Ghost is in control. And the scripture said, open thy mouth wide and fill it, right? <laughs> you might have heard that before. But look at this, that the scripture tells us that last week in our lesson, we were talking about um, the trick of Gehazi when he played because, as we said, carnality was blocking his eternity. And there's a certain phrase here that Elisha used when he was wrapping up this whole thing in bringing the judgment that was going to come on Gehazi. 
And this I told a lie that he said he didn't go anywhere, right? But then, listen to what Elisha said. He said, Thy servant went no whither. And he said, told him, he said, Went not mine heart with thee, when the man turned again from his chariot. Is it a time to receive money? And I stopped right there. He said, is it a time to receive money? Right? And you know all what he said was coming with it. Today, for many people, when you ask the question, what time is it? Their answer would be a time to receive money. And a time to receive olive yards and all these things. That's, their, that's it. And one of the things that the news actually tells you, which is true, and, and, and it's even the blindest man can tell, and you watch it, is that why is it you had an economy that was shut down, an economy that was dying, and people were dying, and yet still, you hear these rich companies say they made more profit than maybe at any other time there was. People are out of jobs. People have to run into food banks. People don't even know where the next bread is coming from. They're lining up like when food ration in a communist country, right? And they're saying, the very rich people are saying that, you know, we made so much dividends, we made so much profit, we made... Is it a time? What time is it? The time for them is just like with Gehazi. A time. And the prophet was saying, I know what you're thinking. And I know that you have the sacks of money to prove it. The sacks of money that will take you there. Right? Although you stole them, you told lies to get them. Okay? But you have them anyway. They're in your possession. But I want to tell you, you're thinking about what time it is. But I'm going to tell you what time it is. You know, it's like, when you say it's five o'clock, your time in another part of the world, and maybe even the very same country you live, you might be looking to go home and to, from work, and in another part of the country it might be just lunch time. In another part of the world it might be just time to wake up. In another part of the world it might be just time to go to school. And that part of the world might be big time. So because you say this time, these are saying, yes, this is my time. And Elisha was saying, that's what you're saying. But there's another time attached to it, which is God's time. It's God's time, the time of judgment. Because God saw what you did, saw the lies you told, he saw your dishonesty, and he saw your crookedness, your extortion, and your wickedness. And so judgment has come to your door. And God didn't take away about the sacks of money. Elisha didn't say to me, go bring those sacks of money and bring them to me. Elisha didn't even want to touch them. Because they were not sanctified. They were not according to the will of God. He didn't want to touch them. He said, you can have them and go, go, go with them. But as you go, God is sending something with you that you can't turn back for generations to come. Because as you took the man's money in the seat, you actually drew 
the curse that was upon his life. And that curse will follow you like the smell of a skunk to the day of your death, be passed on to your children. My God. None of these things I'm telling you, I thought about it. You know, sometimes I say when, when the Lord is leading you, you see the way clearly, you know where you're going, but sometimes you're picking your way like crossing a river, stepping from stone to stone. You know what that is, right? The Lord told Samuel, he said, oh, Samuel said, how am I going to go at night, Dick? Jesse, son of the king, so I'll kill me. He said, just, just take a heifer and I'll tell you what to do, step by step. Okay, I'm not going to tell the whole story at first, but just watch me. I, I, take it, I just go and I take, take control. So, I ask today, by the word of God, what time is it? It, 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 I'm befuddled when I think about what's going on in the world today. Because I, to my mind, it is abundantly clear that something catastrophic is about to happen. I mean, you have seen sometime like I was watching something the other day and they were trying to show something in a distance. And you see it on TV. And you see the person put on binoculars and what happened now? But they show you what the binoculars is picking up, which could be a hundred miles away. Okay? You wonder to yourself today what binoculars some people are looking into. The word that was prophesied, the word that was spoken, right, in the Bible must be fulfilled. It must be fulfilled. The word that not only the prophet spoke, but the Lord himself spoke, must be fulfilled. I started a whole series of lessons here of studies when the Lord showed me about his coming the first. Signs at the first of the coming of Jesus. And he told me about what is going to happen afterwards. He told John, he said, Thou must prophesy before many nations and tongues. He told me, You're going to be talking about this for a long while. I had no idea. And over years passed, I think by now, and I'm talking about it. I may be quite close to a year, but I'm talking about the very same thing about the coming of the Lord. The coming of the Lord. As I said, if we believe that he came as a baby, and the word is sure and steadfast, the same prophet that spoke about him coming as a baby, spoke about him coming as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. The same prophet. Okay? So God will judge, God will judge this world. He judge the people of this world. As I said, they make a lot of money off of him as a baby. But they don't want to, they want to act like they don't, oh, we don't even know. Right? We don't even know. Yeah, we, we don't know if this Jesus ever existed. Yeah, we don't know. But if we can make money on his name, we will. Alright, so let me just move on. So I'm saying to you that the prophet said to him, Is it a time? You know, I know what you're looking at. And he said to him that, If only you knew. Today the word of God is the very same. Is it a time for you to look at peace and prosperity? And the word of God is saying, if only you knew what was coming with that. Right? If only you knew the curse that was coming. Right? The curse that has plagued this earth last year, coming down which they call COVID. And they call it all manner of names, and as I said to you, it's the same thing. Okay? It's the same thing. Dressed in different suits, different clothes, different shoes, whatever it is, the same. I'm saying, what I'm just trying to say to you, of the devil. And yet, still, people are still want to hold on to their sacks of money. They want to hold on to the things of this world. 
They don't want to go back to the Bible and to see that what was written in the Bible is actually coming to pass. And the time of the end is very near. So today, I, I put out some scriptures here and I'm um, in the prophets and I want to look at a couple of them. I want to see what order I have them. The scripture said here that before I go into that, let's see what, what the Apostle Paul said about the time. Right? The time. What time is it? What time is it? Do we know what time it is? He said. I'm going to read from in Romans 13. And I'm going to read from verse 8. I'm reading there deliberately. Because the verse I want is really down in um, verse 11. But I want to read from there because... It's not just for us to know that it's that a time of trouble, but it's also for us to find a refuge in this time of trouble. Amen? So the scripture says, Owe no man anything but to love one another. For he that loveth another has fulfilled the law. Amen? For this thou shalt not commit adultery, Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet, and if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. And this speaks about how we should walk before God. Alright? Okay, this is, this is going to be a refuge. If we're going to walk as... Uh, in, 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 in chamber and wantonness at the, at the world, then we won't have any refuge in this time of trouble. When he said, Love worketh no ill to his neighbor, therefore love is the fulfilling of the law. Fulfilling of the law. And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believe. The night is far spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the armor of light. Let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rioting and drunkenness, nor in chambering and wantonness, nor in strife and envying. But put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. So the scripture is clear. He said, no in the time. Uh, now it is high time for us to awake out of sleep. For now is our salvation nearer. Now, you know, what usually happens to people is that they hear this from when they were young. They hear it all the while. And then they say, hey, I mean, do we see anything happen? They ask, do you, do you see anything happen? They say, no. They ask the next friend, do you ever see anything happen? Are they talking about this Jesus coming? You ever hear anything happen? No. Okay. Okay, but come down to December, they will come and celebrate with drinks and partying and all these things about the coming of Jesus as a baby. Lying lips. Liars. Okay? As I said. Because the same prophet that spoke about the first coming spoke about the second. And God is going to judge this world. Because if you believe the first, then you must believe the second. So the scripture said, so I said to you, they've been asking one another, well, nothing never happened. Okay, but they, yeah, well, we can make money off of his name. Said so that he, you know, he babe. They asked, well, what is this Jesus Christmas? What is it about? I said, oh man, you don't know that Jesus was born? Yeah, really? Was he born? Um, okay, how did that go? Okay, and you, you play the music and they play all these things and they make up all of these things. Right? And they make millions and millions of dollars. I said if Jesus was to copyright his name, I think they would, the whole world would owe him billions and billions of dollars, billions of money. Right? The whole world. And they still owe him, whether, whether so or not, the world owes him. We owe him for everything, for light, for health, for, for the breath of life, for the sunlight, for heat and, and everything that we have. But the scripture said, it is high time for us to wake out of sleep. That sleep of, 
said, well, Jesus is not coming now. Um, you know, uh, we, have to, we can wait until so and so and we have an agenda. And we want this to be done and this to be done and that to be done. And we have these things we want to get done. Okay? So God's agenda must wait until our agenda is fulfilled. Now, in, in 1 Corinthians chapter, in 1 Corinthians 5, Paul speaks about this. He said, But at the times and seasons, brethren, you have no need that I write unto you, for yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. Alright? For when they shall say, Yes, um, but when they shall say, Peace and safety, then come a sudden destruction upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, are, ye brethren are not in darkness, that that day should overtake you as a thief. Is that true? Am I in darkness? Right? Am I in darkness? Paul is saying that it will take people as a thief. But he said, you have no business being in that company. You have been privileged to know the ways of God. You have been privileged to see into the things pertaining to eternity. You are the privilege of, you know, it's like, you know, I, I, was, I was talking to somebody and, and, and he would say, you know, there was a storm and he, he didn't get even a chance to, to go and buy some food and stock up and do certain things. Not that he didn't have the money, but he was too busy working. When somebody has had the privilege of doing it, I had the privilege of doing it. I'm saying to you, God is saying to you that you have the privilege of making yourself ready and being prepared for his coming. Now last night, two nights ago in Israel, they had one of the worst, I, I say that I would call it a catastrophe. They had a, a terrible experience in Israel in a time of peace where they, at the last time I heard it was 50 people were already dead, where they were having a religious festival, a religious gathering. And it, it bothers my mind how could people in a religious setting where it's supposed to be something in the fear of God stampede others and trample them to death, even children? I won't tell you the depth of my perception of it, okay? Because I'm on the ear. Right? You talk to me privately and maybe I could tell you. But I'm telling you this, that something is wrong. Something is wrong. Even the solemnity of a, of a service, of something where you actually in fear of Almighty God, should constrain you, should control your emotion and how you act. <clears throat> and I'm, I'm sure about that. Excuse me, I'm sure about that. It should control how you act. Because you're not going to be um, in worship and acting as if you are in a stadium. No, it cannot be. Nevertheless, why I bring this up? Because as far as the end, as we spoke the other day about the redemption of Jerusalem, this is where it all started and this is where it's going to end. Today, Jerusalem's enemies, Israel's enemies laugh. They celebrate because they saw, they have seen what happened right in their own religious festival. They might be saying to themselves like, how come we have our religious festival there all the while and nothing like this ever happens? And our 